To be vaccinated or not to be vaccinated? That is the question that's been dividing society since the COVID-19 vaccine was introduced. If you're not vaccinated at the moment and you're, you're eligible, you're not just irresponsible. I mean, you're an idiot. It's estimated that the pandemic has killed over 5, 5 million, million, yet some are more willing to risk the impact of catching coronavirus than getting jabbed. And now the unvaccinated are taking up a large proportion of hospital beds in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be looking into some of the reasons behind vaccine hesitancy and trust me it's not a simple explanation hang on hang on i have a great story about this um, you're kind of interrupting no trust me this is a great story Okay, so did you know that vaccine hesitant movements are as old as vaccines themselves? You see, in the early 1800s, this guy called Edward Jenner started rubbing the pus from sick cows into his family members. Ew! But at the time, lots of people were getting sick from smallpox, and Jenner had realized that the milkmaids who had had cowpox were protected from this smallpox. So after rubbing all this pus into his family, they never developed the disease. He had created a vaccine. Unsurprisingly, Surprisingly, people were kind of freaked out by all this pus stuff and criticism ranged from religious to sanitary to political objection. For others, their discontent in the vaccine reflected their general distrust in medicine. And many also objected because it violated their personal liberty. Sounds familiar, right? Fast forward to today and there is an overwhelming amount of scientific evidence that supports the efficacy and safety of the COVID-19 vaccines. Several studies indicate that two doses of vaccine are between 65 to 95% effective at preventing symptomatic disease with the Delta variant, with higher levels of protection against severe disease. While it's true that the effectiveness of vaccines will decrease over time, with the limited information available on the new Omicron variant, this study suggests that a COVID-19 booster shot could provide 80% protection against severe illness. And if you look at this NHS data analysis from July to November 2021, it shows that the vast majority of patients needing ECMO, aka extracorporeal life support for severe respiratory failure, were unvaccinated. But as of this August, there were only nine deaths in the UK, where the COVID-19 vaccine contributed to or was the underlying cause of death. Okay, scientific terminology aside, this basically means that when you wear both sides, the risks of severe side effects from the vaccine are tiny in comparison to the risk of the disease itself. Yet it's estimated that around 6.4 million, 10% of the eligible UK population, have not had a COVID-19 vaccine. It's difficult to know how many of that 10% are vaccine hesitant, but in a separate study by the ONS from July 2021, it found that around 4% of over 15,000 adults surveyed reported vaccine hesitancy. Whoa, 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 Joe, you haven't even explained what vaccine hesitancy is yet? Oh yeah, so basically it's important to understand that there's a big difference between being vaccine hesitant and being anti-vax. The former means they have a peaceful reluctance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability of vaccines and many unvaccinated people are simply undecided. In 2019, the World Health Organization listed vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 threats to global health. Okay, but what causes vaccine hesitancy? According to SAGE, vaccine hesitancy is complex and context specific, varying across time, places, and vaccines. The five C's model developed by scientists studying vaccine hesitancy long before the pandemic outbreak considered the following psychological factors as influential in a person's decision-making process. Number one, confidence. A person's trust in the vaccine's efficacy and safety as well as the health services offering them. Number two, complacency. Whether or not a person considers the disease itself to be a serious risk to health. Number three, calculation. An individual's engagement in extensive information searching to work the costs and benefits. And then constraints slash convenience. How easy is it for a person to access the vaccine? And finally, collective responsibility, the willingness to protect others from infection through one's own vaccination. And aside from psychological factors, we need to be aware of the context of people's decisions, such as age, gender, religion, socioeconomic background, race, ethnicity, etc. For example, an adult living in the most deprived areas of England were more likely to report vaccine hesitancy than adults living in the 
least deprived areas. The same goes for unemployed adults compared to employed and retired adults. And we mustn't forget how structural racism might have led certain ethnic groups to have a lowered trust in medical authorities. But also, all this scientific research has to contend with social media. For example, this study states that for those who obtain information from unregulated social media sites like YouTube, they're less likely to be willing to become vaccinated. Well, that's awkward. And as the same study suggests, misinformation thrives when there is a lack of trust in government, politics and elites. People who haven't been uh, vaccinated. I mean, how absolutely crazy it is. Absolutely crazy. Wait, Joe, surely correlation does not mean causation. And just because somebody falls into one of these groups doesn't mean they're automatically vaccine hesitant, right? Correct. So as you can see, this is really complicated. There are a multitude of different factors at play here, and I've only scraped the surface as to why someone may feel hesitant to get the COVID-19 vaccine. But this also suggests how it can be difficult to overcome vaccine hesitancy, because a one-size-fits-all approach won't work. Anti-vax, on the other hand, is very different. The term is more commonly given to those who were described as conspiracy theorists and are more forceful and disruptive in imposing their views on others. These are the people spreading vaccine mistrust, mumbo jumbo you know those guys talking about microchips and stuff this video has really challenged me to reevaluate my perception of vaccine hesitancy it's made me realize that there's a multitude of different factors that could influence somebody's decision making for vaccination so we can't assume that all unvaccinated people are the same so i'm gonna pass it on to the experts now if you were struggling to talk to someone who was vaccine hesitant, I've listed a few resources down below, as well as further information about vaccine hesitancy.